So we finished our form, we've set the notifications, we have gone through the preview and made sure that our form works correctly. So the next thing to do is to embed the form onto one of our pages. So we will go up to the page section of WordPress and we will click add new page. And we're just going to call this the gravity survey page. Now when you install Gravity Forms, it puts this little icon here onto your Visual Post Editor, and this is to add a Gravity Form. So we will click on that, and it will list our forms. There's one form here, our Customer Feedback Survey. And we're given a couple options here. We are given the option to display the form title, to display the form description. Both of these were set when we created the form. And then to enable Ajax, which allows us to change items in the form without having to reload the page or the form itself and then you'll click insert form. Now essentially what this does is it includes a short code based on the settings that we chose. So when we talk about there being two different ways to embed to use this visual post editor which can be in the post and page section of your website, what it does is it also automatically gives you the short code for that form with those settings. So for example, if we wanted to include this form with these settings, we could just simply copy this short code and use it anywhere else on our website. If you wanted to put it into a sidebar, you could do that. But actually, Gravity Forms gives you a sidebar widget, so you don't even need to use this short code in a sidebar. If you wanted to use it within PHP and do a short code somewhere on your template, you could use this short code and that will show up there as well. It could also be mixed in with other areas of your website, like for instance if you're having some sort of JavaScript run and you want to run this form somewhere uh, in another page where you can't access the Visual Post Editor, you can use this short code with your custom code. So we will click Publish, and once this, po uh, once this page is published, we will then view the page, and you will see our form on the page, just like we saw it in the survey in the form preview. So here we have our customer feedback survey. This was the title, this is the description, and here are our form fields. Now we're gonna run through this for two reasons. We're gonna show you what it looks like when there's an error, and we also wanna do it uh, full on live so that we can record an entry, so we can show you how the entries are recorded in the back end. So we're going to put a few names in here. We'll just put my name in there. We will do my email address. Was it easy for you to receive this service? Yes, but for the sake of pulling up this first conditional, we will click no, and we'll say it was too expensive. That was the problem. Was the service helpful to you? Yes. If yes, how did the service help you specifically? I learned a lot. What was your favorite feature of the service? Pricing. Are there any improvements that you would recommend? No, it was great. Overall service rating between 1 and 10. So we'll make this trip our error. We'll put in 13 here because it's asking us enter a value between 1 and 10. Would you recommend this service to others? We'll leave that as yes. Would you like to be contacted about your response to the survey? We'll also leave that as yes, but we will ask them to contact us via phone. And we will put in a message here. Let's say it is 310-555-1212. We'll put in a nice fancy movie number and we'll click submit. And you'll notice we have a couple errors here. There was a problem with your submission. Errors have been highlighted below and they're highlighted in red. This field requires a unique entry. So we have filled out this form before with the info at orgspring.com. I will put in a different email address here. And overall service rating between one and 10, I put in 13. So let's change that to nine. And the phone field looks fine. We'll click submit. And you'll see here it gives us our success note, thanks for taking our survey. Of course, you can fill in that form with any HTML that you want. You could also style it with CSS, or you could add in more information. You could also do a page redirect. You could create a separate WordPress page with pictures and other things that uh, give more information to the user upon completing the survey. You could also make that redirect your coupon code like before. Instead of sending an email, you can make a page that can be accessible with your coupon code so that they reach that redirect when they complete the survey. So this covers the two ways to add or embed the survey, one via the Visual Post Editor and two via the shortcode, which can be used virtually anywhere that you can use a shortcode throughout WordPress. Now the last step, which we'll cover in the next video, is how to look at the different entries and then export them so you can work with the data.